No, good morning. I am in the Lake District. Coming over Kirkstone Pass, Oldswater is behind me, Windermere, Ambleside is in front of me, and we've just stopped because as we were coming over the, the mountains, as you can see in the video, the uh, mist is coming beautifully over the mountains themselves. Uh, so all I've done is stop to the side of the road, literally the car is just here and I'm just here. We have the 70 to 200 lens on shooting at F8 and it's a dead simple pano shot uh, from right to left, left to right, whichever way you prefer to shoot. Um, just making sure that everything's pin sharp at infinity, which is uh, the mountain range itself. Foreground interest, there is none. It's purely the mist and uh, how it's enveloping itself over the mountain literally like water rippling down and that's shot one in the bag and we've not really even started the video yet but let's keep going because the lake district is always stunning So we're not getting very far. I'm trying to get over towards Home Fell and Hodge Close, but uh, the views just keep telling me to stop. And again, it's another roadside image. Why do I like the shot? I like the shot because it's a good portion, I would say, of, of Lake Windermere, and you can see Lake Windermere going off into the background. And we've got the mist, just hugging the trees on the top. What would make it ideal? A little bit of more light, maybe. Uh, and also, uh, the trees, the trees are still not turning. Uh, everything in the lakes or across the country actually is about two weeks late. So we're not getting that beautiful color just quite yet, but you know, it doesn't matter, does it? That, that vista, that vista is, is iconic. It's an iconic shot. It's an iconic honeypot shot. I absolutely adore it. So anybody who watches my videos knows I have a tendency to, to wing things. I really didn't have a subject matter when I came out uh, this morning, just coming out into the Lake District to shoot images. But on the way over from Kirkstone Pass, I thought it would be a good idea uh, to go to those locations that are easily accessible on a weekend for you to come and shoot. And so we're here at Blee Tarn, uh, which is one of the most iconic images, one of the most iconic images in the Lake District for the fact that you've got uh, a beautiful tarn with a nice foreground element which is the rocks and then you've got the Langdales in the background to the right hand side. In the midground you've got Side Pike which if you feel like a little climb, if you come to Blee Tarn Car Park, you go around Blee Tarn and you climb up and you'll have a lovely view of the Langdale Valley. You can see a couple of images that I've taken previously. I'm not going to climb it today. It takes about 45 minutes from where I'm stood. Um, so, why today is moody, misty, no direct light on the tarn at all. It's relatively smooth, so we are getting a, a, a decent reflection of uh, side pike in the uh, water. But if you come here on a really still morning, this will be like glass. And then if you're lucky enough that the Langdales aren't bathed in mist, you'll get the Langdales reflected in the water as well. And it can make an absolutely stunning shot. But Unless it's absolutely silent it down and really, really windy, it's always worth coming here because the car park is literally a minute from where I'm stood. So I'll tell you through the shot, it's very simple. I'm shooting at F14 and we are at, on this 16 to 35 lens at 18 mil. At F14, everything is gonna be acceptably sharp front to back. If you're a beginner, if you're focusing somewhere in the middle of the lake or uh, on the far shore, you're gonna get nice and sharp. At, 18 24 mil at f14 and that's the image simple simple as john Oh, 
we leave Bleetown, there are shops all around Bleetown. As I mentioned, you can walk around up to Side Pike. But if you uh, follow the path round to the left of Bleetown, you'll see a bridge behind you. If you go over the bridge and just go down the little path, you come to this location here. And the reason that I've come here is, is, is with the right conditions, you get a beautiful uh, vista in the background with the mountains in the background. And there's some interesting foreground, which is the stream and the silver birch in the background. Today, the conditions aren't the best because the atmosphere, the ozone is quite hazy. So you get a, a, a really soft background type of shot. Now, if, if that's something that you like for your grand vista, that's great. Uh, but some people don't. So if you find that the conditions aren't that conducive to, to shooting that Grand Vista shot, then possibly consider going a little bit more intimate. Feedback that I get, particularly from beginners, they feel somewhat inadequate because they think that they've got to get one, one image and that image has got to be perfect. And they almost say to me apologetically, well, I, I go out and I shoot loads of different images and see what, which one I like. I think the beauty of digital photography is we can all do that, whether or not we're a beginner or whether or not we're experienced. So what I've done here at this location is I've used three different lenses and I've shot my 16 to 35 mil lens at about 20 mil. I then put my 24 to 70 lens on and shot at 50 mil. And then I've put my 70 to 200 on and just centralized on the silver birch and the surrounding rocks around it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get home and I'm going to see which images I like best. Now, I might like all three. I might like one, I might like two, I might like none of them. If you gave this area a week or two, everything will be turning real golden brown. But what's already happening, as you can see, is the bracken has already gone golden brown or it's going golden brown potential with the right light to have an absolutely stunning shot but today we've got a nice shot There is a very sound theory that location maketh the shot and this location maketh the shot. So what we've done is we've walked from Hodge Close and you walk to the right hand side of Hodge Close, go around the back through the gate, walk up the hill and then you come to the feeder lakes for the workings in the slate quarry at Hodge Close. And when the conditions are right, it's an absolutely stunning location and the conditions are right when it's misty, when it's not particularly windy and when the trees are starting to turn. We've got two and a half out of three. So we've got misty conditions. Unfortunately, it is raining a little bit, but you can't have it all, can you, Jono? Uh, but that, those misty conditions are creating uh, a, a beautiful mood without any input from me. But that's why um, this area is so popular with photographers, because you've got absolutely stunning silver birch and you've got the surrounding hills when conditions allow, and you've got a plethora of compositions. The only difficulty is, 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 is finding one that you like. But what we're doing is, is that I've set up a composition here with a 24 to 70 lens and I'm just careful that I'm keep wiping it because I don't use a lens hood 
carry them and I'm scared of breaking them, so they stay at home. It's a, it, it, it's a simple shot. All I'm making sure is, is, is that I keep my highlights unblown out, so I'm not blowing out my highlights. And what I really like about this composition is we've got the water that's leading us into the shot and then we've got the water in the background. And that's not it, I just love the dead trees. So there's particularly the dead tree on the right. And the dead tree on the right has got cobwebs on it and they're showing up really nice close in. Uh, and it will look lovely in a print, provided everything comes out all right. It's just like being in a candy box. Can you be in a candy box? I don't know, a toy shop, toy store. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. This is landscape photography. This is what landscape photography is about. And it doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen that you get all the conditions in one. And as I say, we can be a little bit picky and say it could be a little bit more golden, but I'm taking this. And I think everybody would. <sighs> oh, a fly. Only one problem, people. See these people, they walk into your shop and go out going like this. The landscape is for everybody, I am only joking. We've come above that uh, little pond that you saw and we're shooting <laughs> these trees. <laughs> I'm not going to say which ones they are because I'm going to call them silver birch because they're, they're silver but somebody else is saying not silver birch. They look like silver birch but they're not. I do apologise. I take photographs. I'm not uh, an arboreum specialist. I'm an arborist. Conditions are challenging in the respect that it's misly, as I've said numerous times on this video, but are absolutely stunning. There's gusts of wind that come through. I don't even want to say gusts of wind, strong breeze maybe, that we've just got to contend with. But because we're in a, um, a light box here of mist and low cloud, I'm still managing to shoot at one one hundredth of a second or one one twenty fifth of a second um, at F9. ISO 64 and uh, so that's great because what that's doing is is the slight movement is just being negated by the shutter speed so that, that, that that's great news and we've just noticed now that the weather has just cleared enough but not too much to take a shot and the thing is now we're getting the mountains or the hill range in the background behind Hodge Close that's actually now coming clearer into shot. So it's that, it's that balancing act, isn't it? Is, is, do I want the mist and mist enough just to take uh, or create emphasis on the trees? Or do I want just enough of a haze or a mist to create that emphasis, but have some background element or interest itself? I think a combination of the two. So before you see the images, I'm gonna go home. Well, I'm not, I'm gonna to go to a travel lodge for a cup of tea and a sandwich from Morrison's <laughs> and maybe a little dram, a dram of Jameson's, we'll see. So thanks for watching and peace. <laughs>